it looks like it turns over to the right a little bit and then the road steers to the left. And wow, that is so impressive. We're actually gonna go over some train tracks here. This is a really confusing area. And that's what I would have done. This is nuts. We're kind of blindly approaching a stopped car up ahead and we need to see if Open Pilot's gonna actually detect this car. Wow, that was really, really good. How's it going everyone? Virtually Chris here. Welcome back to another Open Pilot video. Today's video we're going to be taking a look at Open Pilot software 0.7.1. Uh, this is a pretty cool update. They actually combined uh, the PoseNet model and the Vision model into one, uh, which basically just means the car has a better understanding of the world around it, has a better understanding of how cars are moving and how the environment is moving around it. Uh, so that's pretty neat. I'm going to go ahead and grab the wheel and help it out to go into the correct lane here. Looks like it actually might have done that on its own. I'm not used to these advanced driving models, I'll tell you. So let's see, you're going through a curvy intersection here. And it went over and chose the right lane. I would have done probably the exact same thing. That was a very nice smooth stop. A nice acceleration as well. And uh, yeah, let's see how it does around this turn here. It's doing really nice. It's staying nice and centered in that turn. Maybe a little bit close to the right there with the snow. Open Pilot doesn't understand snow that well, uh, but it's getting better every version, so that still did pretty, pretty good. We're going through some more intersections here that have no lane lines in them. Uh, this one up here is especially hard because it's going over a hill as well and there's no lane lines. So it's a pretty complicated intersection for a self-driving solution to go through, a uh, driver assistance system. But it stays locked in the center very, very nicely. We're gonna go ahead and do a test route, and I'm gonna let everybody rate this drive. I've seen a lot of Tesla Autopilot people do this in the past, and I wanna get in on this. So uh, you get to rate the drive at the end from A to F, and tell me how you think Open Pilot did with driving the car. So we're actually gonna go south, so I'm gonna engage my blinker and uh, choose the desired lane here and let go now that we're in that lane. Open Pilot does have lane change assist now, which is another new thing in this version, which is very exciting. Uh, it's kind of like Tesla Autopilot version one, where it cho uh, you choose the lane, you choose when it's safe, and then you can indicate, and Open Pilot will move the steering wheel and change lanes for you in that capacity. But obviously, the Comma 2 only has one forward-facing camera and one camera checking the driver, uh, so it can't see anything else than that. You really do have to help the system out in those situations, which makes perfect sense. That's really how, uh, you know, driver assistance systems should be. Like, I'm in control, I have a magic wand, like George likes to say, and I can tell the car when I want things to happen. So we're entering an on-ramp here. I doubt my car can do this, and I also doubt the open pilot model can handle this kind of thing. But we'll give it a shot. So I'm hitting my uh, steering limit there. I'm just gonna go ahead and take over for the on-ramp here and then re-engage when I'm on the highway. I do recommend that uh, for anybody using Open Pilot. It's not really designed for these super curvy on-ramps and also it wouldn't be accelerating as a human would in these situations yet. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna indicate there's a guy next to me, that's cool. And uh, yeah, we're on the highway, so I'm gonna go ahead and gauge and set the cruise control to like 75, and we're golden. Uh, as you can tell, Open Pilot has a very clear understanding of where it is in its uh, lane and where it should be. It has both lane lines very clearly displayed, and it's staying dead center. You can see down here, this is actually the camera from the uh, right rear view mirror, or the right side view mirror here. Uh, so you can see this is dead centered when it's kind of in between all these lines, which it is. Open Pilot saw me being distracted. You saw that. I was looking down here for a little bit. Uh, so it's good that it knows things like that. So, but yeah, we're entering a nice calm turn here. It's really nice to see how locked in the wheel feels during things like this. I mean, that is fantastic. So yeah, we're continuing. We're speeding up a little bit gracefully, which is nice. Open Pilot still does have a pretty big follow distance. They apparently have tweaked it a little bit uh, in the stop and go traffic, so there's a little bit less of a gap in those situations in this version. 
but in general it's for chilling and having a nice follow distance so it's not really meant for kind of that medium traffic situation but that's something that the comma people are looking into for the future when they add end-to-end -end longitudinal control which will mean uh, the artificial intelligence and machine learning will decide how fast the car should be going in any given situation and you know how much acceleration maybe if there's a bunch of slow cars next to it it might go slower automatically those kind of things yeah so we are staying dead centered right here and the wheel feels really really solid this road starts to do some kind of banking so that's why you can see the wheel adjusting to stay centered even though uh, the environment around it is changing that's kind of a thing in the northeast we have mostly uh, where the roads bank to let the rain water and you know ice uh, kind of flow off them open pilot really does handle that very well so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and do my first assisted lane change here so what you have to do is put on the blinker when you're ready to uh, make the lane change take a look and then when it's clear you give it a nudge and it's gonna go over <laughs> I got splashed by the bridge there and then I let off the blinker so yeah that was really really smooth really nice it feels like I would have done a lane change. So let's go ahead and get back over here onto the right now that we pass this car. So I'm going to put on my blinker again and give a little nudge. Hope pilot's going to do that for me. And we're good. So that's a really nice new feature that they've been working on. And that's also artificial intelligence. So it does a different lane change based on the environment. Uh, but I've noticed they've, they're pretty generally uh, gentle and calm and pretty, pretty good. So I love that, but if you ever needed to take over for safety or for some like super fast lane change you had to do, of course, I'd recommend taking over manually for that by pressing either the gas or the brake or the cancel button on the cruise control. So yeah, we're doing a really great job here. I mean, this is where Open Pilot is best, and thanks to the Comma 2, it has driver monitoring in the nighttime as well as the daytime, which means as a driver on a road trip, I don't even have to touch the wheel. For anything. I can really just touch the wheel for lane change if I want to make those decisions, but that's all up to me. Yeah, so we're gonna get off at this exit coming up ahead, and I'm gonna probably use the assisted lane change to get off the highway, but depends on the exit. If it just kind of immediately exits, I'll just go ahead and take over, because Open Pilot isn't designed for things like that, obviously. So it looks like it does have a little bit of an area, so I'm going to go ahead and do an assisted lane change over there. And now we're on the exit ramp. And we're going to go ahead and take a right here. This is actually a place I've been before in my uh, RAV4 hybrid video, which is just a really nice road that goes all over the place. It's a little bit uh, curvy, so we can get a little bit of an example of Open Pilot's uh, side road performance. And then we'll go ahead and come back and end through this stop and go traffic situation here. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave my cruise control set to 75 just because, you know, there's gonna be a car in front of me at all times that's gonna help me regulate my speed so I don't have to worry about it at all. So yeah, accelerating nice and gracefully here up to the correct speed for this area. And we're just gonna be cruising through. This road is very, uh, you know, very banked at different times, it twists and turns. We're gonna go, kind of going through Vermont country here. Uh, so that's why the road is all over the place. And you'll see Open Pilot compensating for that every time the road has a, a change in that angle. So I would say this is exactly where I would be in the lane if I was driving right now. Uh, it's, you know, it's not too close to the left, which is nice, but also it's not too close to the right which is good uh, because, you know, there's snow over there and there's potholes more likely over there as well. So it's really just dead centered. Uh, this kind of sucks that we're going so slow here, but that guy finally moved away and we're accelerating up. Uh, the, <laughs> the gas floated a little bit. I have a Honda pedal in my car, which allows Open Pilot to have direct control over the gas. Uh, so that was kind of the tuning there. That's not really Open Pilot's fault. I'm not the best with that. Uh, yet again, we have someone going off the highway here, off the road. Actually did a good job of starting to speed up when that guy was already leaving, actually. I'm pretty impressed by that. So I'm going to set the speed limit to 75, and we'll see how Open Pilot does on these roads. 
as you can see, uh, there's a nice curve here. I'm actually going to even slow it down even more to 40 here. So yeah, we are cruising. You know, really, really smooth steering control. It stayed really, really nice in the lanes there. I'll set it back up to 75. Open Pilot does have slow down for turns. That's more for highway speeds when there's a really steep turn coming up in the highway. Open Pilot will uh, do its best to slow down ahead of time for something like that. But yeah, this is really, really nice to have open pilot work, even on roads like this, which I think are a little bit more challenging for it. They got a little bit more going on. We're going to go ahead and go up to 55 here, since the speed limit increased. And people around here generally go five over, so that's not a big deal. It's a very, very pretty drive. I definitely love doing this drive. I would say a little bit closer to the left lane than I would have been personally there. Uh, but at the same time that we were turning, the road was also kind of changing its pitch. So that would make sense why Open Pilot needed to compensate for that a little bit later. I mean, it can't instantly know, you know, what the road ahead is going to be in terms of pitch and everything. But yeah, as you can see, it's doing a really, really good job. All right, we're entering on some more curves here. I'm actually gonna go set my speed to 50, but it may need to be a little lower than that, and this may actually exteer, exceed my steer limit, but we'll see. No, perfect. That's actually exactly how I would have done that turn. All right, we're coming up on a stoplight here. I'm just gonna lower my speed with open pilot so we can see how it's gonna handle uh, this kind of big turn up ahead. Now I'm probably going to turn around and start heading back. Yeah, as you see, I reached my steering limit there. So we're going to go ahead and turn around and head back and do some stop and go kind of near the mall area around here and see how it does with that. All right, we've made it to the red lights and stop sign area. And I just wanted to see how Open Pilot does in this stop and go situation. Right now we're the first car at the light, which that means uh, we had to take over because Open Pilot cannot detect stop lights or stop signs. Uh, so that's really up to the job of the driver and the driver's seat. That's why you always have to be paying attention when using Open Pilot. All right, the light's green, so I'm gonna go ahead and set my set speed to 35-ish. And I'm just gonna make sure it goes to the correct lane over here behind this guy. Yeah, it looks like we're all good. All right, so I can definitely see the follow distance is a little bit closer uh, during these types of situations, which is pretty ideal. You would want that, uh, you know, when you're doing stop and go, you would want to not have a giant gap in front of you. So this is actually pretty good. The wheel is just so dead centered and so smooth, like there's no ping ponging or anything. It just knows exactly where it wants to go, which is fantastic. We have a split in the road here. Let's see what happens. Open Pilot does not know what to do with that one. It ends up kind of going in the middle, but eventually taking the left, which is what I wanted. I noticed Open Pilot 0.7.1 isn't the best at these kind of situations uh, where the lane slowly gets wider like that. That's no big deal. Let's fast forward when this light goes green. Crawling up a little bit seem to do that really nice and human-like. And the light turned green, so we'll see how it does. Once again, if the car floors it, that's my tuning, and that's not really Open Pilot's fault, but my tuning's pretty good. You know, it only does that sometimes. Like right now, that's actually exactly what I would want to do. That's the kind of acceleration I would want in that situation. So here we are going through an unmarked intersection yet again and staying exactly centered in the lane through the intersection, which is fantastic. We got another light up ahead. It looks green so far, but we'll see if that lasts by the time we get there. Looks like there's actually a bus. Well, we're gonna wait behind this bus. <laughs> All right, the bus kept moving, and so are we. It looks like this guy's actually gonna make a turn here, which is gonna maybe suck depending on how it handles it. No, it did pretty well. 
and we went through yellow, which is fine. The yellows in Vermont are super duper long, so that's no big deal. It's going to be interesting because we're kind of blindly approaching a stopped car up ahead, and we need to see if Open Pilot's going to actually detect this car. Wow, that was really, really good. That detected a car basically when I would have actually started braking for it. That was fantastic. I'm going to need to do a comparison video soon of Open Pilot to stock Honda Sensing because there is zero way stock Honda Sensing would see that car until it causes an emergency braking event. And that is really bad and you don't want that with your adaptive cruise control system. So that was actually super duper good. That's one of the things that 0.7.1 does better is checking stopped cars ahead because it kind of knows the movement of the whole world a little bit better than before. So going through another intersection here, does, it did actually turn over it like that. Uh, that's probably what I would have done through that intersection and now there's lane lines once again. So we're back to following those to some degree. That was perfect. I'm really impressed with this version. I think it's doing a lot well. I'm actually gonna speed up my set speed a little bit to keep up with the cars in front of me here. Uh, yeah, it's doing very, very nice. Once again, I'm gonna have to take over because there's a light and I don't wanna go through a red. <laughs> All right, it's green, so we're gonna go ahead and re-engage the system here. I am very impressed with how well it's doing on roads like this. It's actually really, really, really nice. Got another intersection coming up. This one is a little confusing because it darts over to the right. Also, it's turning red. No, I think Open Pilot would have done that properly but I had to take over to not run a red once again. This is actually a super hard problem. It's something even Tesla hasn't figured out yet. Uh, it's just so hard to know exactly where to stop. You know, we as humans are really good at knowing where to stop, uh, but yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised how hard it is for a machine to understand where to stop, especially uh, just kind of looking at a line on the road. You know, sometimes the lines are faded. There's so many variables in determining where you have to stop at a stoplight and like what light pertains to you it's a whole mess so that's why you know humans are there to take over for now and for the foreseeable future definitely all right the light screen so i'm going to go ahead and accelerate a little bit and re-engage open pilot here and we'll keep going got a slight swerve over to the left here with the lines Did that really well the lane line on the right is kind of covered up by snow and everything, but it looks like it is detecting now. Uh, there was some salt, almost too much salt that it didn't detect the lane line, but it does fine with the only one lane line. It doesn't really matter. I mean, as you see, it does pretty decent with no line, lane lines at all, so. Looks like we got another red light up ahead, but we'd have people in front of us, so that's not a worry anymore. Let's see how smooth this braking event is. Yeah, pretty smooth. Open Pilot actually didn't see that median thing there where the road split apart, so I just nudged the wheel a little bit to tell it where I wanted to go, and it did that beautifully. Here we are, this intersection kind of does a little bit to the left. And it looks like we also have done that. The funny thing is the lane line's over there, but this is actually where most people are driving. As you can see, the lane line over there is super faded. And yeah, it looks like right about now, people start to go over towards that lane line, and we did that as well. So that's actually pretty spot on to what I would have done. This road is pretty bad, man, a lot of bumps. But as you see, even in these weaker lane line situations where something like Honda Sensing or Toyota Safety Sense wouldn't even know that there's lane lines here, Open Pilot can see them really clearly. That's my stupid car thinking that those people over there were gonna hit me and it's really dumb. Uh, just a car thing, nothing to do with Open Pilot there. So it looks like we're entering kind of a school zone, following these cars up ahead really, really well. And I like this test route a lot. I haven't done this road before, but it has a good variety, I think. 
So yeah, here we have a turn lane showing up on the left. This open pilot needs to make its way over to the right to stay centered in the correct lane, and it did that. I'm getting so unlucky with this light. These lights, it's ridiculous. I just want to see open pilot go through some intersections. I'm just gonna resume now that the light's green because I'm sick of not being able to go through intersections. So hey, at least we went through that one. Uh, usually I'd recommend just stepping on the gas and accelerating a little bit to get going and then uh, resuming control to open pilot, but it really does depend. So yeah, here it looks like we're gonna, whoa, that guy, I think open pilot actually might have broke for that. I'll have to go back and check. I was gonna say, I thought there was a turn lane up ahead, but I was very false. That's not what <laughs> was happening. There's just someone turning off. So here open pilot's a little bit to the left because it's really following that lane line. Whereas the road I know is pretty big, so I would have stayed a little bit towards the middle, but that wasn't unsafe by any means. Here's another situation where open pilot needs to choose a, a lane, and I think it shows the right one there, it shows the middle lane. To resume going straight through this little town, that's perfect. And the smooth, the braking is very, very smooth. I really love that. I think open pilot can brake better than I can, especially at high speeds if like someone's slowing down really fast, like trying to avoid a collision or something, open pilot is very smooth with that. So here we go. This might be actually a little bit of a complicated intersection. It looks like it. It looks like it turns over to the right a little bit and then the road steers to the left. And wow, that is so impressive. The open pilot just did that and we're hitting my steering limit there. I'll help that out a little bit. That was incredible. Open pilot knew exactly where to go through that intersection, even though it's never been anywhere, any of these roads before. Uh, that is super great. Man, roads like this, open pilot has got it nailed down. Even in the salty weather where there's some salt on the roads, some snow on the side, it's doing really, really great. I put the GPS here so we can navigate home. We're actually going through a little bit of a weird highway thing uh, that I've went through with open pilot in the past and it's been kind of confused about uh, just because it has super wide lanes for no reason. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a whirl here see how it does. Yeah, it looks like that's coming up right on the left here. Great. So open pilot will actually, you know, slow down and I think pick the right lane here, but I do want to go left in this situation, so I'm going to disengage open pilot and make that lane change myself. And come on, buddy. <laughs> and we're going to take this left and re-engage open pilot. Let's go ahead and set it to 70, just to be safe. It's doing really nice. You can see here what I mean. There's really no lane line on the right. There's almost none on the left either, so it's kind of funny. We're going to set it to 60. Uh, yeah, this is really impressive. This is exactly where I would be kind of even, you know, avoided those potholes, probably not intentionally, but I do appreciate that. And yeah, we're continuing in. The lane line's getting a little clearer here, which is good. And yeah, there's going to be a stoplight up ahead. We'll see how open pilot handles this. It looks like people are slowing down. I'm going to make sure it stays in this middle turn lane, slowing down nice and gracefully. And I'm gonna let go now because I think it's got a handle on things. This is great, there's a lot of lights around this area. Uh, so we'll get to see that. This intersection curves a lot and it did that beautifully. That's exactly how I would have done that. Same with this road again. Boom, perfect. Guys, it's hard to make these videos interesting because Open Pilot's getting too good. It used to have so many problems back in the alpha days. Ooh, here's a problem right here. You can see how it picked up uh, kind of that sheen on the road as a lane line and it veered a little bit to the left. That's often an issue, you know, roads with that kind of sheen on them or something will make the model confused. Uh, hopefully that'll be fixed in the future. But yeah, open pilot used to screw up all the time. Like you saw once again, that was a curved intersection with no lines and it went beautifully through it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and take over here. Once again, because Open Pilot can't make turns like this, there would be no way. Even on the best cars, it wouldn't be able to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and re-engage. Set it to 45. Okay, so This could be interesting. We're going 45 and we're going to have a stopped car up ahead. We'll see how early Open Pilot can detect this. We're also coming into the sun, so not ideal situation. And yeah, detected it, slowing down a little bit harsher than I would have, but we all know how hard stopped cars are to be detected by radar. So Open Pilot uses vision to be like, oh, hey, is there a car there? And then if there is a car, uh, it kind of merges those informations together to know how fast that car is going. It did that really well though. Lost the camera for a second there, but we're back. Uh, we literally only traveled like a quarter mile. Uh, here we are going through more intersections that are unmarked and it does them beautifully. Once again, looks like we're coming up on a weird crosswalk where people are slowing down. A lot of stop and go in this area which is no big deal for open pilot. Got a pretty steep turn up ahead. So steep it has signage. Let's see how it does. Yeah, that was really great. It's just hard to trust a car when there's a turn like that coming up ahead, but it did good. I always worry about, you know, the car hitting the median on the, on the right. Here we have a really curvy intersection that I'm not too sure how Open Pilot is going to handle. Looks like it's actually turning red and we have a car stopping ahead, so we get to see how this handles that. So far, so good. Uh, we're at the entrance of the intersection at least. Let's see how it does when the light turns green. All right, turn green. Let's see how we do here. This is awesome. I can't believe it. Kind of a little close to the right, I a little bit so that I had to take over because I was a little worried about the median. It probably would have not hit it, uh, but just in case I wanted to do that. But I mean, even the fact that it has any general idea what's going on in intersections like that is absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, you know, all our data is helping to train the fleet. Whenever you buy a Comma 2 and you upload your driving data, it's helping out, you know, discover how to get through weird intersections like that and just do them beautifully. So we got another start here. You know, really nice. There hasn't been many clear lines in here for actually a while now. down for this red light. I'm going to actually go the local way so we can, you know, get more experience with local driving with Open Pilot and see how that does. Light's green, we're back engaged, and we're going to keep on heading on. So once again, literally no lane lines through any of this stuff. I don't see any. Open Pilot is maybe trying to make its own lane lines out of uh, you know, the water in the roads or whatever. But that's fine, it's doing really well here. There's a turn lane that just appeared on the left. We're staying on the right. And that building is entirely new, never seen that in my life. Same with that one on the left, both entirely new buildings, never seen them. <laughs> that's super weird. We have a weird median in the middle there, which Open Pilot avoided pretty well. We're actually going to go over some train tracks here. This is a really confusing area. And that's what I would have done. This is nuts. That's exactly what I would have done there. Uh, as you can see, Open Pilot can't see any lines right now because the road is so reflective. So this is actually causing a little bit of issue where it's uh, picking these up as lines. But it's not causing too much of a problem. We're still staying in lane. 
that was so cool how it uh, went right and then it went uh, left again to get through that train track because there's a lot of poles on the left hand side so that's what I would have done I might have I mix up my lefts and rights all right but you know it went left and then it went right to avoid those poles it felt like not sure if it actually does that or not but that's the feeling that you get here in the driver's seat got another green light gonna keep on going straight through them does that very well it goes through intersections so well it's crazy we're entering a pretty steep turn here it's doing that beautifully and there's a roundabout up ahead there's no way open pilot would be able to understand a roundabout so I'm gonna take over to enter and exit that roundabout and then we'll re-engage open pilot I mean this is kind of the same thing with autopilot it's just such a big, you know, such a high steering angle. Oh man, this road sucks. We're gonna take over for pothole reasons, oof. But just the steering, we're leaving open pilot engaged for the gas and brake during that part. Uh, but yeah, even if you had a Tesla up here in a roundabout, they can try to do it sometimes. I think I've even seen some Toyotas with TSSP or TSP2. Uh, do roundabouts if like it's an immediate exit and enter enter an exit um, they can't do the whole thing there's no way we're still limited a lot by the model field of view so the model actually is a very small portion of this of what it can see it's actually pretty tiny compared to the full frame image uh, but the idea is to eventually get closer to full frame as open pilot continually gets better Kind of give it a higher field of view so it can make better decisions Detect you know closer cut-ins all that kind of stuff You know, it's really good at detecting cut-ins at a far away distance detecting them shooting in really quickly But close up that's a situation where I would probably take over Just to be safe And I'm just gonna take over right now to enter the roundabout. So far, Open Pilot's uh, pathfinding actually looks pretty accurate on where it's going, which is nice to see, but there's no reason to risk it in a situation like a roundabout. So yeah, we just exited the roundabout. I'm gonna go ahead and re-engage. We're at 45 set speed, and we're on a bridge now. These lanes are very narrow. light but we got someone turning here let's hope they find a window looks like they did this is really confusing intersection because you actually have to what are people doing you can't do that right? you have to go over to the right here so I'm just gonna take over because I wouldn't expect open pilot to understand something that complicated I'm gonna re-engage going up this hill though and it'll be interesting to see how it handles up ahead because sometimes there's some parked cars up ahead that really get in the way on this road and they're they're pretty hard to deal with I'm sure for an autonomous system like this so that'd be good to figure out it's getting a little close to the right there I'm gonna take over because I think that's a little bit more than my car can handle steering wise and we're gonna re-engage here so hey we lucked out there's actually no cars parked on the right side currently uh, we're just having a good time on the right side Open pilot's going to need to get more over right because the turn lane is starting to show up on the left. So we'll see how it does with that. It actually does look like it's inching over right ever so slightly. And yeah, it ended up pretty close to that car. Got a green light once again. Here we go. Another unmarked intersection as they are. Usually they don't have lane lines going through them. We're kind of easing into the bike lane a little more than I would have liked. I'd probably like to be over to the left a little bit. Looks like it's now correcting. Yeah, now we're exactly where I'd want to be. And if you notice when Open Pilot makes mistakes, they're usually pretty minor and they don't really cause any problems in terms of safety. They're just more kind of preferences on how to drive. You know, some people might like to drive closer to the right in certain situations when OpenPilot won't have that information about you, obviously. 
Well, we're kind of in a lot of traffic here, guys, and I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. So please be sure to leave a rating uh, of how Open Pilot did during this drive. In the top right, I'm going to put a poll there, and it's up to the audience to see how they thought Open Pilot did in all these different situations. Later on, I might just do entirely unedited uh, uh, drives where I have a very specific place I'm going. But in this one, I just wanted to test out 0.7.1 and see how it did. And, you know, overall thoughts for me, I think Open Pilot did really good. I'd give it like a B plus or something. There's a few areas where I had to take over more so for convenience, but it would be really nice if Open Pilot stayed more centered in certain situations. Uh, but that's all things that will come in time. So if you guys want to remain updated on Open Pilot and the new versions, be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'm going to be doing Open Pilot update videos every time we get a new update here and uh, doing those test drives. So yeah, I'll see you all in the next Open Pilot video. Bye!